Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm down at the foot of President Street on Eastern Avenue at the Eastern Avenue pumping station. Um, and we're outside of this station that's been part of Baltimore City's sewage treatment uh, facilities for over a hundred years. Um, now some of us may know it as the former Baltimore Museum of Public Works. And I for one loved coming here and learning how many miles of sewage pipes there are underneath the city how much a manhole cover weighs. Um, sadly, the museum closed in, 19, in 2010, uh, but I am thrilled that today I'm going to be joined by Rachel Ellis, who is the director of a new organization, the Public Works Experience, and she's going to share with us what uh, she and her group have been doing over the last uh, number of years and uh, their vision for the future. But before turning it over to Rachel, let me just say a few words about the building itself and say thanks to CHAP, the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation, for great research on it. The story of this building really starts in 1904 with the great 1904 fire. At that time, Baltimore, Baltimore was disgustingly behind our peer cities uh, in that we had no su municipal sewage treatment at all. Our privies and outhouses flowed into the Jones Falls, jo uh, flowed into the Gwynn's Falls, basically flowed everywhere that you didn't want sewage to flow into. Um, the great 1904 fire, oh, actually, let me read uh, one quote from 1895, a Baltimore City Health Commission report that said, Our privies are the most dangerous enemies to our lives and happiness and are a fruitful source of disease. And indeed, uh, typhoid, yellow fever, and the like uh, ran rampant. The 1904 fire cleared out a good chunk of downtown, and luckily for us, our city leaders uh, saw that as an opportunity to build not just above ground, but a whole new sewage system a below ground. They may have had a little motivation from their friends in Annapolis, who that same year passed a law making it illegal to discharge sewage directly into the bays or its tributaries, the Jones Falls, the Gwynn's Falls, etc. So with a little motivation and an opportunity, opportunity, we built what the Public Works Commissioner said was the largest uh, sewage system project in the world, and that may in fact have been true. Um, they got started, and they got started with a bang. By 1912, they had completed the main uh, piping underneath the entire city, not just downtown, and two-thirds of the ancillary piping. And by 1912, this building was up and running uh, as part of that system. It is fantastic in its architecture. The architect, if you're interested, was a gentleman named Henry Braun, um, who also designed the Northern District Police Station in Hamden, which I think uh, uh, shares a resemblance to this building, and Brown's Arcade on Charles Street, which I don't think looks at all like this building, so a versatile architect uh, for sure. Um, but the building was designed to be functional as well as beautiful. Um, the way it works is we're down here at water level, and uh, sewage from downtown and adjoining neighborhoods uh, still flows into the building. And then the pumps, it is a pumping station powered by coal, would pump it to its ultimate treatment destination out in Baltimore County. So lots of pipes involved here. Um, I am going to wrap up and say that the system is still up and running. Uh, to, uh, back then, the uh, chief engineer said that it was, if you're wondering, as neat and clean and odorless as any business op office. Um, and it is, uh, I will vouch, neat and clean and odorless. Um, over the years, it's had a few changes. In 1960, uh, the coal-fired uh, engines that ran the pumps were out. That, that cleared space on the first floor for uh, the uh, museum that was here. And what's going to be here in the future. Um, and then in 1982, the museum uh, came into being the first of its kind in the country. Um, again, sadly closed in 2010. But we're going to end uh, on an up note with Rachel Ellis to talk about what's in store uh, for this public space in the future. All right, Rachel, we're all yours. Thank you, Johns. My name is Rachel Ellis. I'm the executive director of the Public Works Experience, once the Baltimore Public Works Museum. Our goal with the Board of Directors, we're a 501c3, is to reorient this instead of a backwards looking experience to make it a, a learning experience about today's modern public works and the challenges that are faced. Um, so we're going to do a lot of fundraising. We're gonna launch a capital campaign. We have a lot of renovating that we're planning to do. And our goal again is to really face forward and help people understand the value of water the value of all public works and how important they are to our, our modern communities. 
So I got involved with the Baltimore Public Works Museum about 11 years ago, working for the board, taking meeting minutes and whatnot, and helping them drive this into a, a new vision. Um, probably the most exciting part to me is the, the premier location of this incredible historic facility and the opportunity that we have to really reach the general public, to reach everyone and let them know how important public works are. So if this has sparked your interest in the public works experience, we do have a website, which is www.pwexperience.org. Um, we do have an event coming up on May 21st. It's going to be our first ever public works celebration. We'll fill the promenade with tents and displays. Our streetscape and our facility will be open to the public. And we hope you can join us for big truck day, pump station tours, and a lot of exciting, engaging activities for everyone of all ages.